Hi, I'm Debbie with Nixine Publishing, and I'm coming to you actually from the New Jersey coast today. Um, we have Adrian Nixon, who's coming to us from Yorkshire, England, and we're continuing our discussions on graphene. Hi, Adrian, how are you? Great, Debbie, and good to see you've survived all the storms and everything, and uh, you're relocated. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have something brand new today to talk about. Um, so coming out of uh, NPL and the Geek, some exciting things going on with functionalized graphene and a machine that's been developed to be able to look at it up close. So Adrian, tell us what's going on. <laughs> Right, I need to share my screen definitely for this one. There are, as you said, Debbie, there are three companies involved. So there's a private company called 2D Tech. There's NPL, which is the National Physical Laboratory in the UK, which is the equivalent to your NIST in the USA. They do all the standards, but they've also got a lot of very smart people working on the new toys and things and making sure that they work. Uh, and then we've got the Geek, the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center. What they've been doing is they, they've looked at making the, the private partner, uh, industrial partner, made various functionalized graphene. Now, functionalizing graphene means taking chemical groups and actually sticking it onto the nanoplates to make the graphene powder do other things. Graphene oxide is one of the, um, the functionalizations that you'll have probably heard of before, I would guess. So in this particular case, they, they've looked at uh, graphene oxide and uh, a few related compounds. Um, now, what the National Physical Laboratory did was they've been looking at um, a technique called tip enhanced Raman spectroscopy or TERS. What it is, if you, you put the graphene sample uh, on a little uh, stage, so you take a single nanoplate from this powder, then you can analyze it. You, you've got something called an atomic force mic uh, microscopy probe. This is a very fine atomically sharp probe that you can use to probe the sample with. And then you shine a laser from underneath, a Raman laser, you can get the reflected light gets concentrated back and you can analyze that light and work out, not only be able to see what was there, but also you can analyze the spectrum and tell you what chemicals were there. That's quite cool, isn't it? It's really fantastic. And, and the little um, probe reminds me of some of the other two that you've shown us in how they've tested graphene. So. Yeah, we'll have, yeah, we'll have to have a look at some of these probes and these uh, spectroscopy techniques in other videos, Debbie, because there's a whole wealth of uh, very expensive scientific toys that do really interesting things. It might be useful for us to sort of explain how they work. For the moment, if you can just think of a very sharp, atomically sharp point pointing at the graphene nanoplate, you shine a laser from underneath, it can reveal in greater detail than ever before what's there and also analyze it chemically. So what the image looks like that comes out from the results is this. Now, can you see this sort of oval splodgy thing here? Yes. The, uh, and I don't, can you see my mouse moving around on screen? Can see that, yes. So what you're looking at here is actually an individual graphene nanoplate. That, yeah, wow. The, this scale bar here is 200 nanometers long. Now, just to give you an idea, 200 nanometers if you can imagine a square 200 nanometers each side, so it's about that, that big, that would be the finest resolution you can get on the very best optical microscopes today. So that sort of square there would just be a single pixel in a normal microscope image. And look at the detail we've got here. We, the, the individual pixels are much, much smaller. And what this is actually showing us, um, this new technique, can you see this white around the edge? Yes, it's like a, it's like something's um, attached to it. And so you, what you're actually looking at are the, uh, the molecules that are around the edge of the graphene plate. And you can see here that they're more on the edge than there are in the middle on the what's called the basal plane. It's amazing they can isolate that down to one nanoplate. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Staggering the, the work that these guys do. And this is what National Physical Laboratory are really, really good at. These guys are experts. It, they are a, a world-class laboratory. They're one of only three in the world. Wow. Um, so what they actually did with then, they, the industrial partner had made some graphene with different chemical groups on the, on the edges. The National Physical Laboratory was able to use the technique to look and say, yes, you've done what we think you have. And then the geek actually took the powders and then mixed them with polymers and tested the functionalization so they could actually see what effect the functionalization had on the mechanical properties, things like the tensile strength and compressive strength and things like that. This early work so far has managed to sort of 
figure out some in the early stage exactly what's going on. Uh, it's still live work. This is only a few weeks old, um, but this is pretty impressive. So what they've actually found is, we just look at a slightly larger picture. So again, this is the same image from uh, a single nanoplate. Here are the, uh, the things around the edge. What they've found is that when the uh, functional groups are added around the edge, they improve the, um, uh, the way the nanoplate powders and um, engage with the polymer and it makes it stronger. But then when they've got functional groups on the basal plane, then they cause defects that reduce the mechanical properties. So it actually gets worse. Now to explain that a little bit more, I'll just stop sharing my screen because I've got a molecular model. You can yeah. see it here. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of these. You'll recognize this, uh, Debbie, uh, probably, as graphene mm -hmm. oxide. Yes. Yeah, so these red and white groups here, the red are oxygens, the white ones are hydrogen. And you can see the, the functionalized groups are attached mainly around the edge. And what I've done this time is, um, you, you can't draw these things, you have to actually make them. That's the reason I use these molecular models. There's one functional group here, this um, epoxy group in the middle here, which I've just put on the basal plane to illustrate the point. Can you see how, most of the graphene is flat, like you'd expect graphene to be, but where the functionalization bit in the middle is, can you see it sticks up? Yes, it's like it's pulled upward. Yeah. Away from the plane. Yeah, it's because you've taken these back to SP3 hybridization, basically. You know that um, uh, if you imagine a three-legged stool that's been, uh, that's got another thing sticking up, then you've got uh, four bonds on the carbons here, whereas there's apparently only three here. But yeah. more importantly, can you see that it's torn a hole in the sheet so I can stick my hand through? Oh, it has. Yes, you've, we've lost the pattern that, that makes graphene so strong. Yeah, and that's what's going on here. That's what the Tersing showed so, uh, and the geek work showed. When you've got the functionalization around the edge, the center of the, uh, the nanoplate is still quite strong. But the more you've got functionalization actually on the basal plane, it tears holes in the graphene and you get this sort of bendy, sticky up stuff, which weakens it. And the more holes you get, the more the nanoplates are weakened. So when you put them into a polymer, the whole polymer is then not as good as you'd expect. So you have to have it just right in order yeah. to make it be effective. Yeah. And the reason you functionalize is because if you just got normal graphene, then that's the same all the way around. And the polymer you're mixing with might not stick and bond to the graphene nanoplate. So that itself might not do as brilliant a job. Whereas when you're sticking chemical groups on, the polymer's got something to engage with here. So it locks into it. And that's what helps it form a better composite. And it just, it needs to do that around the edges, but not, not so much that you would have it in the middle as well. That's it. So when you're making functionalized graphene, you've got to use gentle techniques, which just stick the stuff around the edge and not too aggressive because then you start tearing holes in the nanoplate. And that's what the uh, NPL and the Geek work shown. It's quite cool. It really is. Wow, well, thank you so much, Adrian. That was very interesting and, and something different with the um, molecular models. I really like how it showed it to us, you know, in addition to telling us. Yeah, you can't draw this stuff. And when people do try and draw it, they get the wrong answer. So it's only really making the models that helps you understand what's going on. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, uh, we'll be back again for another video. And uh, Adrian, thank you so much for your time.